Have you ever encountered thrips on your houseplants? If you have, you'll know they're a nightmare for the houseplant and to try and get rid of. So what we're going to do in this video is have a closer look at thrips, what their life cycle is, how we can try and tackle them. These two plants that I've got here today are unfortunately affected by thrips, so I'll show you how I treat the plant, a solution that you can use to clear the plants of thrips as well as some of the pests, and also some tips on how to prevent reinfestation and keep those thrips and possibly other pests at bay. If you haven't encountered thrips and you've got houseplants then you're incredibly lucky, although they are very difficult to see. So the adults are usually darker in colour, brown to black, and while that might make them easier to see, they're incredibly small, so only a few millimetres long, and the larvae are even smaller, so usually green, translucent or cream in colour too, which makes them even more difficult to see. So you might think, such a tiny creature, only a few millimetres, how can they cause so much damage to a big plant like a Monstera, or even kill off smaller plants or immature plants? They actually feed off the sap in the leaves, so they've got little suckers and they will bite into the leaf and drink the sap or feed off the sap. Over time, that will obviously start to cause damage to the leaf, but when they grow in numbers, you've got lots and lots of damage affecting different parts of the leaf until the leaf eventually dies off. With the life cycle as well, they have their life cycle over about a period of a month to 40 days where they will go from egg to adult, reproduce and then obviously die off but then the cycle will begin again with those that they've reproduced. The fascinating thing with the females is they can reproduce asexually so they don't actually need a male to reproduce which makes them even more dangerous in that they can reproduce I guess faster or more effectively than if they did have to wait for a male to pair up. So. With the eggs as well, they can lay between 80 and 200 in their lifetime. That's one female. It's going to exponentially spread the thrips across your plant and possibly the rest of your house plant collection. So they need to be kept under control as soon as you notice that they are there. One of the unfortunate things about thrips as well is when they lay their eggs, they actually lay them in the plant material. So if you do happen to notice them and notice plant damage, if you notice that you have got eggs anywhere or clusters of the thrips on the leaves, you might want to take the leaf off completely because you don't know if there are any eggs still remaining in that leaf, even if you do treat them with what I'm going to show you a little bit later in this video. So as I said, unless you check the plants on a regular basis and you can actually see these really tiny creatures, then you might only notice there's an issue when you start to see damage. So I'm going to bring this a little bit closer so you can see what I'm talking about. And usually you'll start to see patches on leaves where there is blotches potentially, or it looks like it's dried up or maybe even a little bit burnt. And if you imagine this is because all the sap's being sucked out of the leaf, or maybe they're actually blocking the capillaries or parts of the plant and then it's causing the edges of the leaves to brown, like here for example. And then this one, if I just step out of shot so that it focuses on the leaf, you'll see this one is almost completely paper thin. All of the sap has been taken out of that and that's completely dried up. And I can see on the back as well, a, a sign for thrips as well. If you don't actually see the creatures, their excrement is like little tiny black dots, which you'll notice little tiny black spots across the leaf. So this I can see has those little black spots on the back of the leaf and the and down the stem actually, you can see it down the stem. But now we can look at how we will treat the plants and hopefully get rid of them. Now when you've got a house plant that's got pests on it, usually it's best practice to quarantine the plant away from the other plants to make sure the pests don't spread. Also check the plants that are in the vicinity of it to again make sure they haven't spread and they might also need treating too. Unfortunately this Monstera has been here a while and I've only recently noticed that it's got an infestation and noticed it's quite a bad infestation too. So I've resolved, I'm already resolved to the fact that I need to treat all of these plants in this vicinity. Now I did say that they can lay a lot of eggs. They tend to lay their eggs within the plant material as well, so within the leaf. So if you notice you've got a leaf that has lots of creatures on it, lots of thrips on it, it might actually be better off to just remove that leaf altogether, particularly if it is already very damaged. Because you don't also know whether the eggs might be in the leaf if there are damaged areas. Like I've already said up here, it looks like there are clusters of them here and there's a lot on the back of this leaf. So rather than treating this leaf and potentially leaving eggs behind or any creatures that I don't see or even knocking them off into the soil on, on the rest of the plant, I'm actually just going to remove that leaf. That will hopefully also trigger new growth from the plant. So what I'll do is give this a water and a fertilise after I've cut off any bits that I need to cut off. But the first thing that you'll do, get rid of any overly infested areas, cut them off if you can't treat them and also cut off any excessively damaged leaves. So I'm going to take this leaf off and one of the great things I can see with this leaf is there's a new one starting further down the stem so I'll cut it just before that one starts and hopefully that will grow off where I've taken this one off. So I'm going to bring this a little bit closer to the camera as well just so you can see what I was talking about. There are patches there where I think there are clusters of the thrips on the leaf. Now it can of course be really painful to cut those leaves off but it is for the greater good of the plant so the plant will recover hopefully with cutting those bits off new growth should develop and it's to protect not just this plant but obviously your other house plants to make sure that nothing else comes off this and spreads. 
So one of the good things about thrips is the larvae don't fly, the adults do, but they don't fly very well. So they might still move between leaves or move between plants, but they do also, they don't grip the plants very well, so they can drop off or even jump off as you disturb them. So that makes it great for just washing the plant, which is a really simple solution to start to get the infestation under control. So unlike this Monstera, I can't really move this because I'll probably just spread the thrips everywhere if I try to move it. But if the plant is small enough and it's not too delicate, you could possibly put it in the shower, for example, rinse off the leaves, try to avoid giving it too much water in the actual pot, but aim at the leaves, try to get the top sides and the undersides of the leaves, the stems and any bends or crooks in the stem as well, just to make sure there aren't any hiding spaces for the thrips so you wash them off. If you've got good weather, you might take them outside and use a hose just make sure it's gentle enough that it doesn't damage the leaves or the stems. If you've got particularly delicate plants, you might want to use a different method, which I'll show you in just a moment. If your house plants are too big to move into the shower or move outside, then you can just wipe down the leaves with a damp cloth. A J cloth or a microfiber cloth works really well for this. You can just use water and then try and kill off any of the thrips as you go. It sounds awful, but they are pests and we want to save the house plants. We want to get rid of them. So just wipe down the backs of the leaves, the fronts of the leaves and the stems and anywhere else that you can get on the plant to try and get rid of as many as you can, as many as you can potentially see. And if you wanted to, you can just use water and then treat the plant afterwards, or you can use the solution that I'll show you how to make in just a second and actually use that on the cloth instead and wipe down the leaves with that, which should hopefully help as a treatment to kill some of those thrips and act as a preventative as well. Now, of course, there are many different ways that you can treat pests on your plants, and I'm gonna show you just one solution. There are many others out there if you wanna do a bit of research. You can also use this in two different ways. Again, I'll show you whether or not you want a weaker solution or a stronger solution, depending on the issue that you're trying to deal with when it comes to pests. Of course, you can buy ready-made pesticides in the shops as well. Many of those will unfortunately contain chemicals. Many will be for outdoor use as well. Because we're dealing with house plants, we don't want to be spraying the chemicals in our homes. We're trying to kill the pests, not ourselves, so we don't want those chemicals building up around the home. If you do decide to use a store-bought one, try and go for something that, that is labelled as naturally derived and also even something that is specifically for houseplants, so you know that it's designed for indoor use. Now I did say the ingredients I've got here today can be used in a couple of different ways, so you might use the weaker solution, maybe for day-to-day -day care and preventative measures, or maybe less severe infestations, or you might use the full solution, which I think is more effective, particularly in this instance where we've got lots of thrips going on and we don't know the extent of the infestation. So the first ingredient I've got is soap, and you can use this by itself mixed with some water. You can technically use dish soap, although bear in mind that does have other chemicals and foaming agents in it, so you don't necessarily want those on your plant, and it might be difficult if you're using a spray bottle because it'll become very foamy. So I'm using Castile soap, which is naturally derived and saponified from vegetable oils and coconut oil, as this one is, and it doesn't contain any surfactants or foaming agents in it, so it's not going to foam up and spread any additional chemicals on the leaves that I don't want. So you could use this by itself diluted, maybe a teaspoon in about a litre of water and then use it as a spray or a wipe. And the other ingredient that I'll be using to make this a bit more effective is neem oil. So you may be familiar with this. This is a well-known pesticide and pest preventative. It also has other beneficial properties such as being antifungal and antibacterial. So you can use it for disease control or just keeping generally healthy plants. So this is from the Azadiracta indica tree and it contains the active ingredient azadiractin, which is what will help to kill the pests, which is what we want. And the smell, as I said, also acts as a preventative. So I'll show you how to dilute it down and use it in the right way, because it needs to be emulsified before it's mixed with water, which is where the soap comes in. And then you can use it as a spray or a wipe on the leaves again. If you are using neem oil, while it is naturally derived and it should be beneficial for plants, always double check this on an inconspicuous leaf before you use it on the rest of the plant, just to make sure that there, it doesn't cause any damage to the leaf, and then you can use it on the rest of the plant. If you are using neem oil, as I said, it doesn't have a great smell, so you might wanna use something else to mask the smell as much as you can. So I'm gonna be using some essential oil as well. So I've got peppermint oil here. You can use other ones like lavender, eucalyptus, citronella, lemongrass, those sorts of things that are also found in pesticides or natural pest preventatives because of the smell, again, will act as a preventative against those pests. So hopefully we'll be able to make a solution with a really strong active ingredient that should get rid of these thrips. So I'll show you how to make that now. So in order to get started, you'll need the ingredients that I've just mentioned, the soap, the neem oil, and the essential oil if you're choosing to use that. Also about a litre of water, although you can of course increase or decrease the measurements depending on how much you need to make. Warm or tepid water is best as neem oil is quite viscous. This can just help it, help it to loosen up as well as support the emulsification process. Plus a spray bottle if you want to use it as a spray as well. So then we can use some of it as a wipe on the larger firmer leaves 
and a spray either going forwards or on some of the more delicate plants where we might need to spray the leaves as opposed to wipe them. As oils are hydrophobic, they don't mix with water, so usually sit as a layer on top. That's why we've got the soap, which will act as an emulsifying agent to help the neem oil mix with the water. So we're gonna get that started by putting a teaspoon of the neem oil with half a teaspoon of the Castile soap in a clean jug. Now we accidentally spilt the first lot, so we're gonna make it again. So I'm putting a teaspoon of the neem oil in the jug, and then I'm gonna put half a teaspoon of the Castile soap in the jug as well. And then that should hopefully act as the emulsifier to help mix the oil with the water as I said and then I'm just going to put a tiny bit of the warm water into the jug as well and then we're just going to mix that together and once you've mixed it you'll know it's done as it'll be a uniform colour and a smoother texture so you can see that there there are some bubbles on there as I was mixing it quite vigorously but there's no oil layer on top so it's all mixed in if you are using essential oil you can add that in now as well use about 1% of the total solution you're using. So for a litre, which is a thousand millilitres, I would use 10 millilitres of essential oil or no more than, should I say, you can use less, but definitely no more than. For safety reasons in cosmetics, when essential oils are used, they don't go above 1%. While we're using this on plants, there will be some residual spray, for example, or we might get it on our hands. We don't want it to be harmful to us either. And then now that we've done the various oils in the emulsified solution that we've got, we can gradually add the water and hopefully that will slowly mix all of that together into the rest of the water so that it's a smooth solution that we can then use as a spray or a wipe. So I'm just going to pour the rest of this in. So there's just slightly less than a litre in there. I'm just going to give that a stir just to make sure that it's all mixed in as it should be and you can see that sort of uniform colour if after adding the water you get any oil that comes to the top, you can add a little bit more soap and mix it quite vigorously. Or once you add it to the spray bottle, give it a really good shake to mix it up with a tiny bit more soap. So now I've got the solution in the spray bottle, which I'll use for the plants with the more delicate leaves or as continued treatments for these over the next few days and weeks as I try to get rid of this infestation. So I'm just going to put that down for the moment. And then I've got the rest of the solution in the jug here. So all I'm going to use is this cloth that I've got, microfiber cloth, J cloth will be fine and then just dip it into the solution and wipe down the leaves, front and back, as well as the stems, just to make sure that I've covered all the areas, got rid of any thrips that I can see, and hopefully treated the leaves and any thrips that might be there that I haven't seen. So there might be some thrips in here by the end of it as well, so I'll just dispose of this solution once I've finished treating the rest of the plant. So all I'll do is, as I said, just dip that in the solution, make sure that I'm not dripping it anywhere, because again, even though it's got the mint oil in, it does smell better, but it just doesn't smell um, as nice as it could with that neem oil in there, so I don't want to spill it anywhere. So I've got it on the rag and I'm just going to use it on the back of the leaves initially just to wipe them down and making sure that I'm actually getting all of that leaf and if there's anything under there or on there hiding on the back, I'm picking it up and getting it with that solution. So just like when you're applying the solution with a cloth, if you are using the spray method, then you want to make sure that you're getting all of the plants, so the upper leaves, the lower leaves, stems and the base of the plant, maybe even a bit on the soil. So one other thing that you can do to help pre prevent reinfestation is removing the top layer of soil, so maybe the first few centimetres, and replace it with fresh soil. So you might notice strips will drop down onto the soil, or you might not even see them, and then they're waiting there to come back up once you've finished treating the plant. But also when the larvae pupate and then become adults, when they go through that stage, they can actually drop onto the soil. So you might not realise that you've got some waiting on the soil. So even if you treat the plant, they could then effectively hatch, I don't know if that's the right term, but hatch and be new adults that then go on the plant and reinfest it. So change the top layer of soil too to prevent reinfestation. I do also have a separate video on neem oil, which goes into a bit more detail about how to use it correctly, as well as a video about fungus gnats and tackling those. Although of course there are lots of pests that we can encounter as houseplant owners. So I will do future videos on some of those other pests so that we can help to keep our houseplants happy and healthy. So if you would like to see those and you found this video useful, please consider subscribing as I'll have new videos every week on houseplant topics, usually every Sunday. If you have got any questions, then put them in the comments below and I'll respond to everyone. And as always, thank you for watching Grow Your Wellbeing.